peeps, Jess here, and today we're trying out Love With Food. It's an all-natural, organic snack box with about 10 items for 20 bucks a month. So you can try a bunch of stuff without spending a whole lot more trying them all at the grocery store. We'll try it today, see what's going on, and see if it's worth it. That being said, I'm still weirded out at the lack of branding. This is the only branding on it. For Karu, it does not actually say Love With Food on it. So at the top, we've got the actual first branded thing that says Love With Food, and it's just that they're doing a partnership with Feeding America, which cool always good to help out folks but then we have the caro branding on the back what immediately is getting me is that this is like a whole range of stuff so if you're hoping for a curation this is definitely not it besides rating whole foods or something that being said i wish they had an allergy warning somewhere in here just because i'm gonna have to search through this with a fine tooth cone to make sure i can eat stuff so first we have zz's blueberry lemon soft baked bar which i appreciate that it on the front says nut free Good to know where your allergies are. That being said, this feels very for kids. There's like a meet the character bit on the back. I'm also not seeing an expiry date on this. That's concerning. So we've got this soft baked bar. It's very lemon scented with a stripe of icing across the top. It kind of reminds me of like the streusel topping of muffins all compressed together into one bar. It kind of smells like a Fig Newton actually. That kind of soft, sweet, fruity scent. Well, cheers. It reminds me of a very chewy oat heavy oatmeal raisin cookie with that oat chewy denseness with a lot of lemon scent. I'm not actually getting like lemon or blueberry pieces. There's kind of blueberry in the background but not really directly fruit. My biggest problem is that the icing or something is giving a really strong artificial sweet fake note to it that's really throwing off an otherwise fine little bar. Like this is the kind of thing I ate on trails all the time. Next we have You Love Fruit and it's a kiwi berry buddy with strawberry and kiwi fruit leather, which those of you who already know I'm allergic to strawberries, I can't eat this kind of thing. This is fine. Just in case I have water on standby. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. These little rounds of fruit leather, they're kind of cute. I love it as the I feel like got a little bit on the go. There is beet juice in here, so I'm expecting some vegetal sweetness but it does just smell like strawberries cheers it's fruit leather it's just kind of a chewy almost gummy consistency there's a bit more of a just a hard chew to it than a gummy but there is some pectin in here so you still get a little bit of that gummy chewiness it's just kind of a fruit punch that's mango forward and then opens a bit into strawberry and even more beet honestly it's the kind of thing that i eat regularly <laughs> i probably wouldn't go for this one though because it's a lot of waste for the fruit leather and it's a flavor that i probably shouldn't eat too much of that being said, I love the idea of this for people who have kids who will not eat vegetables. You do what you gotta do. Next, we have Rip Van Waffle with their Stroopwafel, which if you've ever had Stroopwafels before, they're kind of a thin cookie with caramel in the center, and the best way to have them, I found at least, is have them warm with tea, which is exactly what I've been doing. So it's had about a minute here, chilling and warming up, and you can kind of see all little bits of caramel oozing out the sides, so it smells cinnamon, sugary, and caramely. Very nice. Cheers. I'm not getting a whole lot of the caramel in the center. I'm getting a fair bit of cinnamon and some earthiness. I believe that's a chickpea flour. Some sweetness, some vanilla. I'm not really getting the ooey gooeyness I expect out of strip waffles, but it's not an unpleasant snack. Like, it's tasty. This was going to go really well with the tea. That was tried with the tea. Yeah, I'm getting a dense cookie, a fair bit of cinnamon, but not enough caramel. The lack of the caramel in the center just doesn't make it feel as troop waffle-y as I would like. I get that this is meant to be low sugar, so it's still pretty close. Like, if you're on a low sugar diet, this will probably work for you. I'm just wanting a bit more oomph out of it. Next, we have the Belgian boys with their mini cookie stash, and these are speculose or cookie butter cookies. Oh, they're so tiny. I'm not getting a strong speculose or cookie butter scent. There is a little bit of cinnamon, and they kind of smell like graham crackers with a touch of cinnamon and a touch of vanilla. Cheers. They are super crunchy and kind of airy in a way that really reminds me of like the animal crackers you had as a kid. Not the frosted ones, the plain ones. So kind of just a crunchy cookie, maybe almost a molasses -y note, and then cinnamon as the main note along with vanilla. Still not very strongly cinnamon. I really want more cinnamon out of these. Like, don't get me wrong, they're fine cookies. These have been like the highlight of my lunchbox when I was 10. It's just that I'm finding I want more out of them. I really want more of a strong cinnamon note and maybe some molasses and some sweetness. So next we had Dolcetto with their Cubetti, which are just vanilla wafer cookies. Nothing wrong with the classic. We've got one whole cube of wafer. It looks like you break them off. Kind of a bit sad on the back. They're not easy to break though. It smells really neutral. I'm not even smelling vanilla. Cheers. Definitely my least favorite so far. There's really no flavor, which might be that they were in transit for such a long time. I was checking out the transit time just now, and they were in transit for over a week. So that might have really just been horrible for these little guys. But there's no flavor. No vanilla. Not even like coconut note because it's got coconut oil in it. It's just kind of there with a fairly hard wafer. So I'd love to give them another shot another day. Just for right now, this isn't looking too great. So next we have Hungry Buddha's Keto Bar. It's coconut cocoa flavor 
and just plant protein. It's a lot of pea protein in here. It smells of coconut, looks like a coconut cliff bar. I do like the bits of shredded coconut on top though. Nice touch. Cheers. It's strangely neutral. There's definitely a coconut flavor and a cocoa flavor, but it's just so chewy in that cliff bar, oaty, pea protein kind of chewy way, and just a lot of coconut. But I think if it had nibs or chocolate chips on top, that would also really help. If I was five miles into a hike, I would absolutely eat this. I think right now is not the right time for this bar. Next, we've got a cherry vanilla walnut bar from Perfect Granola, which I will be skipping because I'm allergic to walnuts. Sounds fine though. And next we have another granola bar, the Oats and Honey from Kind. I feel like everyone in the States has had this, but for completing everything, I will eat some. I lived on these in grad school. It smells sweet like sweetened oats. Cheers. It's a fairly chewy oat bar with a hint of a crunch. Not a lot of real flavor going on here besides some sweetness and some oats. If you're not an adventurous eater or you're having a kind of bad day stomach wise, you need to get some in your system, it works. It's fine. It needs more though. We have more from the ZZ's brand, this time honey roasted sunflower kernels. Opening this is terrifying. They smell like sunflower kernels. There's kind of an earthy mustiness to them, very musty, and a light honey scent. Like honey roasted peanuts, but mustier. Cheers. Not bad actually. Sunflower seeds remind me of softer, mustier peanuts. Not in a bad way, just they're doing their own little thing. This has a fairly light honey flavor. I like really a lot more honey flavor and possibly pepper. It just needs something to oomph it up a little bit. They're not bad though, like I would eat these. So next we have Hubbard Peanut Company and their Home Cooked Salted Virginia Peanuts. Thank goodness they have a tab. They smell like peanuts, just peanuts and salt. Nice clean smell. Cheers. They're nice solid peanuts, good little crunch, a little bit of salt, not bad. That being said, my household, we are huge fans of CB's nuts and CB's nuts have a ton ton of peanut flavor. It's a refined peanut taste compared to CB's nuts. You should see the jar of peanut butter downstairs, it's so big. <laughs> Next we have Boulder Canyon and their classic sea salt kettle chips. Pretty nice airy little chip. It smells like a potato chip. Actually a little musty but still a potato chip. Cheers. When I think of kettle chips, I think of a hearty, dense crunch to the chip, and these are really airy. They've got huge amounts of air pockets, they're very crispity, and very delicate actually. They're a little light on the flavor for potato flavor, they're kind of more just gently crispy, salty with a bit of potato. Which isn't a bad thing, just it's not what I was expecting. This feels like a good potato chip for dips. Next we have Appleways and their veggie crackers, which, this smells really musty. Like, did I just open a closet musty? Cheers. I am not the target audience for this. It's a fairly soft, tender cracker, actually. It's not a lot of crispness to it. And it's just kind of musty with a bell pepper after note. I think if it was crispy, it would work a lot better. It could be transit. I'm always good for giving another try, but the flavor combo being just so forward musty with like a wheat and then bell pepper, not working for me. Next we have Pig Out and their Pigless Pork Rinds. That is a hard one to say. It is plant-based. I think they're using pea powder. Yeah, pea protein and pea grits. That's gonna be interesting. So we've got kind of a fluffy, almost like a wide potato chip. Looks like a pork rind. This smells kind of musty, but not in a bad way, like lightly musty. Yeah, little sweet, little musty. Cheers. So I forgot to mention they're salt and vinegar flavored. And salt and vinegar is what you get first. Salt, definitely wash of vinegar, and then hickory. Like a hickory smoke note to it. The texture's not bad, it's a nice crispy crunch, but I'm finding myself wanting more out of a snack than this. It's a cool idea that for someone who's trying to find healthier snacks, they really like pork rinds, this might work really well. I don't normally eat pork rinds, so I'm not the target audience. So this is recipe 33, and their smoky serrano infused almonds, supposed to be smoky and spicy. It's an almond, it does smell kind of smoky, kind of spicy. We'll see. Cheers. There's a little bit of smokiness and a little bit of heat. It does build as you eat more almonds. I'm not getting a lot of heat or a lot of smoke though. And I'm sensitive to heat and smoke, so I was expecting to actually be annoyed by it. I'd like actually more flavor because there's so little smoke and heat here. I think if you really, really hate heat, if you're zero star only, you won't like these, but if you're one star, you'll be totally fine. Next, we have a snack mix from Perfection Snacks. We've got cheddar tortilla chips, pretzel twists, and cheese curls. Just a little bit of classic snacking. So there is jalapeno pepper powder in here, so I'm expecting a little bit of heat. It smells cheesy. Cheers. This is entirely for someone who's been missing out on Cheetos and Doritos, but is trying to also get rid of high fructose corn syrup in their diet. You've got some crunchy stuff, you've got some cheesy things. There's a definite little bit of heat coming through some jalapeno for sure, but it's not high heat, like I'm fine. If you're one star spiciness, you'll be totally fine. I think folks who are zero star or no spice ever will not like these. My only real request would be more cheese flavor. They are kind of nicely cheesy with a good bit of that spice hit, but I'd like more cheese just because I really like my Cheetos to be extra cheesy. Last, not least, we have Fire Creek Snacks and their Hickory Smoked Kicker, which is a beef and pork stick. And it's a fairly large snack at that. Whoa, that is a lot of hickory scent. Hickory hot dog scent, really, with the beef and pork. Oh, cheers. 
Oh, there's heat. So anyone's gonna get spicy today. It's not jerky. It's reminding me more of a slightly dried hot dog. It's actually a better texture than it sounds. It's just got that kind of springy as you think of hot dog, that bite with the casing, but still a little bit dried and a little bit denser with some heat and I'm coughing from it. So yeah, it's definitely going towards two star. However, I'm liking it actually. It's got a nice small flavor. The hickory is not overwhelming. The spice is nice and not too painful. It is building, but it's not like a unpleasant amount of heat. A and I eat a lot of beef jerky left alone. So yeah, I would eat this. Your channel is a zerky and you love beef jerky. I love beef jerky. So this is up my alley. So my favorites, then my thoughts. My favorites were the Stroop Waffle. I just love a good Stroop Waffle. It did need some more caramel, but still pretty good. It did work there. The Fruit Leather also worked for me. I'd like to see more flavors from them just to try one that I'm maybe not as allergic to, but still really fun. And also the Beef and Pork Stick. It's the kind of thing that I actually would have loved in grad school as an on-the-go snack. On to thoughts though. As always, I'm thinking about who is this for, who's the target audience, and I am the target audience. I really love trying new things. The big problem with trying new things though, especially at the grocery store, is that if I don't like something, there's gonna be a lot of waste. So if Love With Food can do this and give me a lot of samples and things to try with very low waste, that's the best of both worlds really for me. Also makes me try some things that I might not have tried otherwise, like that beef and pork stick. I don't normally go for beef and pork that's not just jerky, so it's cool to try something new. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of everything here, but that's how it is when I'm buying stuff at the grocery store to try. I would like to have a box where I like more of the items in it, but that could just be be the next box. That's kind of the joy of trying new things. I do think this is something where I wish it was more customizable, especially for spice level, for vegan vegetarian preferences, and just for allergies. Still, given how expensive organic and natural foods can be, this is about the equivalent to buying four to five boxes of stuff at the store, and I get 10 to 15 in trade. That's pretty good. It's kind of thing I'll get like once or twice a year to try new things if I didn't want to go to the store and try and pick things out myself. I don't think it's for people who have significant dietary limitations or are vegan, since you might be upset about having a beef and pork stick next to your vegan pork rinds. Still weird to know about the branding though. Like what is with the lack of love with food branding? I've never seen a subscription box with so little branding. So that, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you thinking of trying out Love With Food? Have you tried it before? What'd you think? If you're curious about more of my subscription box videos, I got a whole bunch right here for you. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Later!